Chris, what is our first main topic today? First topic is coming from Jared Smith. Hello, John and crew. Love the work you guys do. Thank you. So the first three episodes of Pam and Tommy released on Hulu, and I know you've had interest due to Sebastian Stan and <sighs> Lily James. Lily James. <laughs> I'm curious to know if you've seen the episodes yet and what your thoughts on the show are so far. Thanks. And as always, bring on the filthy. All right. Thanks a lot for saying that in, Jared. And yes, uh, we've had this. Look, we talked about the, the Pam and Tommy Lee show last week there was some controversy about whether or not they should be doing these things and you know I, I believe you should be telling these stories these are stories that are about and happened in public and and stuff like that and i and i get it so that that debate aside which we're not going to revisit again i was fascinated when they mentioned it because at first i was just like we're going to tell the story about a sex tape i mean who cares and then the more we thought about it, when we saw the first that every report, week yeah, <laughs> and we saw the first trailer for it. I remember thinking, oh, looks like they're actually going much deeper than that. Right. And I decided last night, Ann and I, because it dropped yesterday, and Ann and I decided we're going to sit down and watch it. And there's some really good reactions, some lukewarm reaction. I'm going to tell you what, I thought this show is great. Wow. I, I, I honestly think it's great. And it is not the show that I thought it was going to be. Because, listen, we get to the end of episode three, and they're just really starting to get into the sex tape. Right. Like everything else in, in those three episodes is really about laying this incredible context. A lot of stuff I never knew. And it's so funny because like the first episode is just all about Seth Rogen's character. The guy who ultimately gets the sex tape, right? It's really focuses completely on him. And then as I'm watching this and his interactions with Tommy Lee and, and stuff like that, I'm like, I'm watching it. And I'm like, if this was just a movie, not real life, I'd be like, you get that sex tape and you release that sex tape to the public. Because <laughs> like you're like, oh my God, this guy has been wronged. Like very, very wronged. And you're like cheering for him. I found myself cheering for him to get that sex tape and release it and humiliate those people and blah, blah, blah. And then the second episode completely changes direction. And it all just focuses on Pam and Tommy. And it goes back in time a little bit to them first meeting. And then it tells everything kind of from their point of view. And then all of a sudden, like, no, no, don't let this sex tape come out. Don't let this happen. And then it moves into the third episode, which kind of looks at the story from another different point of view. And as it's going through, I just found myself riveted. I found myself really, really enjoying this and, and buying into it a lot. And I'll tell you one of the other things about this show that they've done that I really, really appreciate and like. It reminds us because everybody will say they know this, but nobody seems to actually grasp it. Life is very rarely black and white. And one of the things that I loved about this, and I'm not going to go into the specifics of the, the interactions between Seth Rogen's character and Sebastian Stam as, as Tommy Lee, but you see Tommy Lee from one guy's perspective, from the Seth Rogen's character's perspective, and all you think of is... What an absolute asshole that Tommy, like what an absolute insufferable asshole that guy is. But then you move into episode two and now you're looking at Tommy Lee through Pamela Anderson's eyes. And while you still think this is not a highly intelligent individual, <laughs> you're like, I could see why she fell in love with him. Right? Like, you're, because now you're seeing him because he's a little bit different with a different person. And she, he allows a certain part of himself to be seen to her and the way she perceives him. You're like, man, I could totally see why she would love him and why she adores him. I get it. Yeah. He's not terribly bright, but I mean, I can see why she loves him. And I like the fact that within the first two episodes of this show, it forces, because we as an audience, we want to just label everything, right? We want to label that guy's an asshole, that guy's a great guy. That guy's greedy. That guy is generous. That guy, like we ju we're just very comfortable with slapping one label on people and go. But we are multidimensional beings, and one of the things that I really appreciated was this: this show could have just gone, "Oh yeah, Tommy Lee, rock star asshole," and they could have just gone with that, right? And they introduce us to that, but then they also show there's another side too, and I really appreciated because I found as these three episodes progressed, I was like, "This is a great." look at humanity 
and as at us as people, the complexities of who and what we are and what matters to us. And Pamela Anderson comes across as very, very surface level, also not terribly bright. But then at another time, they re they re they reveal like a much emotional, deeper element to her and a depth of what her background put her in and where she is as an individual. And I just got it. And there is also, a look, I've never thought I'd see a show where a, a guy on Hulu would have a fully explicit, full frontal scene in a conversation with his own dick. I never thought I'd see that, but there's a scene that's like five minutes long of Sebastian Stan talking to his dick. Full frontal, all view, uh, full view, <laughs> the whole thing. A lot more nudity in this show than I thought there would be. A lot more nudity. There's a, Is his dick articulate? Uh, yes. <laughs> and oh, Smarter than he is? Uh, kind of, yes. <laughs> but also, I'll say, like, Lily James... May, I sometimes joke about season one of The, the Witcher about... Um, uh, why am I forgetting the name of the character? Yennefer. That, man, that Yennefer, she loves being naked. Lily James naked a lot. <laughs> show. Lily James and Sebastian Stan are both naked a lot in the show. But you know what? You get swept up in this ride. And I'm going to tell you, for me, I, I am fascinated by the show. I'm really loving it. It's making me appreciate the narrative of what brought that whole cultural phenomenon into being. It's making me appreciate Tommy Lee more. It's making me appreciate Pamela Anderson more. And it's making me appreciate how people negatively would feel about them, but positively. And it, I, I don't know. I'm just telling you, this thing is given a depth to this whole story that I didn't think was possible. So I'm really enjoying it a lot. It's now they've only dropped three episodes, three the, episodes at first. Okay. Yeah. Hey guys, we want to take a second and thank the sponsor of today's episode stamps.com. Now, you know, stamps.com. They've been supporting the John Gambit show for a while here. Now let's face it. Going to the post office is time consuming and really not the way you want to be spending your time. And that's why I highly recommend to do your mailing and shipping online with stamps.com. Stamps.com allows you to mail and ship anytime, anywhere, right from your computer. It, you can send letters, ship packages, and you can pay a lot less with discounted rates from UPS, uh, USPS, and more. And you see, that's why Stamps.com is a must-have for any business. Whether you're a small office sending out invoices, an online seller shipping out your orders, whether you're somebody who's just trying to send things out to your friends and family, or if you're a giant warehouse, like sending out thousands of packages a day, Stamps.com can handle all all of it with absolute ease. And here's the best thing. With stamps.com, you get up to 40% off of post office rates and up to 62% off UPS shipping rates. And this is why stamps.com is an absolute no brainer. It saves you time, it saves you money. It's no wonder that nearly 1 million small businesses already use stamps.com. So stop wasting your time going to the post office and go to stamps.com instead. There's no risk. And with my promo code Campia, just go up to that microphone up in the corner, click on that and enter my code Campia, you get a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a digital scale, no long-term commitments or contracts needed. Again, just go to stamps.com, click on that microphone at the top, and enter the promo code Campia. Stamps.com, never go to the post office again. And then, you know, I was, I was listening to them talking. They were doing an interview. I don't know who with. But Lily James said she was like in the makeup chair for three hours to do the transformation on her face. She looks just like Pam Anderson. Is that, do you feel that when you're watching the show? It's, it's uncanny. Like when you're looking at, look, they did also did a very good job with Sebastian Stan yeah. being Tommy. They did. But I still, when I look at him, I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm looking at Sebastian Stan playing Tommy Lee. Right. I am telling you, there are scenes where I caught myself wondering, did they use actual period footage of Pamela Anderson here? Or is that, no, no, no. Once again, that's Lily James. Like it is so uncanny and it's not just the look. It is the mannerisms. It, I mean, Lily James has just brought this character from the early 1990s and like time traveled her to today. And I, I'm like, I'm flabbergasted. And by the way, it's not just face makeup they did. They gave her boob prosthetics. <laughs> and because they even wanted her boobs to look just like right. Pamela Anderson. Of course. 
And but that's part of it. Like the whole t- every time you're looking at her, you're hearing her 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 articulation, you're seeing her mannerisms, you're seeing her physically. It's like it's just that's it's I'm looking I'm not looking at somebody playing Pamela Anderson. I'm looking at Pamela Anderson. It's crazy what they were able to do. So, I mean, yeah, I, I like to not now, now listen, I wanted to ask you, Chris, like where do you have an anticipation for this show? Like, where is it at? Like, have you been looking forward to it? What's what is interesting to you about it? Do you want to see it? Do you not? Where are you at with it? I'm still intrigued. And there have been other reports. We won't get into it too much of how they've tried to reach out to Pamela and everything like that. So, you know, it is again, this isn't a black and white issue. We're not sure how everything shook down in pre and post production. Um, the thing I'm most excited about, though, now, honestly, is Jason Manzuk is voicing a penis. <laughs> I mean, I love that guy. And that that does get me uh, a little more interested in seeing this to just see how that whole scene shakes out but i i'm really impressed too like we're talking about the whole scene thing. shakes out sorry maybe, maybe you'd have to have seen the episode oh no <laughs> the whole scene oh, shakes no. Out. okay that's oh i see what you did oh, there no i didn't mean to um, <laughs> but i i am i am really intrigued though to see the transformative properties that happen here like the makeup artists here truly are wizards and it Everything I've seen to it looks like the two of these actors really, really inhibit these roles, inhibit these people really, really beautifully. And I'll, I'll tell you what else, like as ridiculous and stupid as their whole relationship was. Because you realize, oh, they, I, I, if I interpret it right, they met and were engaged five days later. Like I've known people. No, I'm not kidding. I have literally. Known I think they got married five days, four days later or something. Didn't or, they? or like within the week or yeah. something like that. But as 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 stupid as dumb as a decision that two people like that make on based on that, I will tell you what: when these two were on camera together, you felt the electricity between them. You really did. Like you felt the electricity between Sebastian Stan and Lily Jane. The way they brought that to life in this kinetic, raw, hedonistic kind of energy that they had. And again, like I said, then they would have these tender moments where you're like. Okay, this Tommy Lee total asshole in one episode, but man, for what he just said to her, what he just did for her, of course she's in love with him. Like, I, I again, I just love the complexity of it and the way they were brave enough to kind of say, no, we're not just going to paint this with one brush. We're not just going to look this from one a one-dimensional point of view. We're going to look at these as people mm-hmm. and the totality that that encapsulates, you know? And I, I really enjoyed it. Like, not my favorite show of the year so far, but far better than I thought it would be. Anyway, guys... What do you think? Have you guys had a chance to check out Pam and Tommy yet? If not, I actually recommend it. I think you should give it a shot. It's much deeper than I thought it would be. If you have seen it, what are your thoughts on it? Whatever you guys are thinking, jump down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts.